Breaking tonight, the White House is now offering a new reason for why President Obama is skipping the funeral of Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia. He will pay his respects when the justice's body lies in repose tomorrow. Hours ago, Press Secretary Josh Earnest suggesting that sending the vice president instead will be better for everyone. Why wouldn't he just go to the funeral to do that? Well, as I also noted yesterday, uh, Vice President Biden, who is somebody that uh, had his own personal relationship with Justice Scalia and his family, uh, will be representing the administration at the funeral. Uh, obviously, when the vice president travels someplace, his security footprint is at least a little bit lighter. Charles, good to see you. So first it was no it was no answer, repeatedly no answer, and finally they've settled on there's a smaller security footprint with the vice president. That's so that is such obvious nonsense that it shows they aren't even trying. That translates as the president is saying, I'm the king, I'm the president, I'm a lame duck, I don't have to run for re-election. I do what I want. I want to go to Havana at the time when our foreign policy is collapsing all over the world. Sure, I'm going to go to Havana. He doesn't care. And the, I mean, he doesn't want to be, spend a Saturday in a pew listening to speeches about how great a jurist Scalia was when Obama believes sincerely that everything Scalia argued for was wrong and harmful to the republic. So he's going to stay home, and he doesn't care how it looks and what other people think. The, if there is a political reason other than a personal one of just a preference and peak, it is that he's going to be nominating a justice to replace Scalia, who will be the antithesis of Scalia, mm -hmm. who will be somebody who will want to undo the 30-year the legacy of Scaliaism. And he doesn't particularly want a photo op in which those speeches in praise of Scalia, in praise of the way he controlled and constrained executive power, i.e. Obama. But that's, that's partisan. That's a partisan concern. I mean, today, in, in realcorepolitics.com, Charles Lipson yeah. put it this way. He, he said, you don't get to wear your partisan hat here, Mr. President. He said, you have a duty. He said, this is shameful. He said, it is your duty to mourn a man who sat on the Supreme Court for decades. He's shirking that duty. Talking about how on, the, on these somber, formal occasions, the president is called upon to represent our country. And every president in history history, we did the research yesterday, as far as I can find, has always attended the, the funeral of a sitting Supreme Court justice. This is unprecedented, what he's about to do. You are surprised that Obama is being partisan, that he's not rising to the majesty of the office, that he's actually acting on personal and um, animus, which I suspect he probably has. He promised I'm in his last year in office all. that was going to be the thing he would tackle. The pettiness of our politics, the smallness of it. But that can't surprise you either, Megan. Look, he campaigned in 2012 on the theme that he's looking to the future and to our children, and Republicans care only about power. He's been saying this, and we all know he's been the most divisive partisan president in recent uh, memory. This is the way he's conducted himself, but he always, almost as a tick, as a habit, portrays himself as rising above everything. He did that in 2008 when he ran. There's no white America, no black America. There's no Hispanic America or the United States. That is who he pretends to be, succeeded in winning election on that, and has governed in precisely the opposite way. I am not surprised at all. Look, when we had the beheading of an American by ISIS, he makes the announcement, and then he hops into a golf cart. And you expect any kind of transcendence or magnanimity on he the part of the president? He has nothing to do. I There's don't. nothing on the agenda this Saturday. Nothing, as far as the White House tells us. It's not like he's got something else to do. He, he skipped the funeral of Margaret Thatcher. He skips this funeral. He made time to go to the funeral of Walter Cronkite, who is a god in the news world. That's true. But this is a sitting Supreme Court justice who sat on the bench for 30 years. And he has no other engagement. Charles, I, I mean, he still has time to reverse this decision. It doesn't look like he's prepared to. I'll, I, I want to I get your reaction on I, something else. Go I, ahead. I, I've reached a level of cynicism about him that is actually a serene 
So I think this is completely <laughs> par for the course. I don't know. As somebody who practiced law for almost a decade and covered the Supreme Court for three years, yeah. I, I, I'm not used to seeing a, a president show this level of disrespect to the Supreme Court, the body, the, the body of the United States Supreme Court. In any event, 